opposite's happening. Never felt more unsafe in my life. The love story of Bobby Cannavale and Rose Byrne began in 2012 after the couple met through a pair of mutual friends just as Rose was concluding her five season run on the legal drama Damages and Bobby was wrapping up his star making turn in season three of Boardwalk Empire. Since then, both actors have continued to see their careers rise to new heights. But despite their very public profiles, the Australian born actress and her New Jersey native partner have managed to keep the vast majority of of their relationship out of the spotlight. Rose once explained the rationale behind this decision to Vanity Fair in 2019, telling them, I mean, press is not something we do all the time, but we're trying to go with the flow. We're generally pretty private. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. After spending close to three years together, these two would move in with each other by sharing a pricey two-bedroom apartment in New York's East Village, but they wouldn't stay there for long. Once Rose would become pregnant with what would become the couple's first son together, Rocco, they decided to spread their wings and then pick themselves up a stunning Brooklyn brownstone in September 2015. At the time, they splashed $2.15 million on a 2,700 square foot, three-story townhouse located on a tree-lined street in Brooklyn's historic Borum Hill. According to property records, the home's previous owners were another showbiz couple, more specifically, Annie Paris and Paul Sparks, both of whom have acted alongside Bobby before. So something tells me that they had an inside track on this place. At the time that they bought their new home, the house was set up so that Bobby and Rose could have easily offset their mortgage and expenses by renting out a ground floor apartment in what was then a two unit building. Rose and Bobby ultimately decided not to do that for reasons that will become obvious as we continue, but for now, let's take a look at the home as it was when these two first purchased it. For starters, the ground floor unit boasted one bedroom, one bath, and an open plan floor arrangement that included its own living, dining, and kitchen areas. Renters here were also given exclusive access to laundry facilities in the basement as well as a tiny terrace that steps down into a backyard garden. Meanwhile, the upper level main unit consisted of a parlor floor that opened up into a loft-like combo living and dining room with thin strip wooden floors, whitewashed exposed brick walls, and an entire section of floor to ceiling built in bookshelves. Towards the back end of that parlor floor was an upgraded and nearly all white kitchen with a center island. Not far from there was a private garden viewing deck and a laundry nook, as well as a half bathroom that opened directly into the kitchen, which is kind of weird, but anyways. Up on the top floor of the duplex unit were two bedrooms, both of which offered exposed beam ceilings and one of which was dividable into two separate smaller bedrooms should the need to house an extra guest arise. As happy as Bobby and Rose were with their brand new home, they understood that in order to make it the perfect place to raise their family, they'd need to undertake a lot of renovations. So they hired trusted architect Frederick Tang and got to work. With their new home having been originally built in 1899, you could say that Bobby and Rose's property was due for an update by the time they moved in some 116 years later. But more than just that, this Hollywood couple wanted their residents to reflect their own unique personalities. With their home being located in Borum Hill, a neighborhood known for having a row of houses each painted a different color, one of the first things Rose and Bobby wanted was for their home to take part in those festivities. So working with their architect, they settled on a bold color selection known as Benjamin Moore's Heather Pink. Frederick explained the choice to Architectural Digest, telling them, the decision on the pink actually came from the inside out as the project developed, the palette leaned towards pinks and greens, and it felt like a soft pink facade would be a fresh change, but also would work with the flanking houses. As Frederick hinted at in his statement, Bobby and Rose's love for this color combo became one of the home's main sources of inspiration, and they wound up using it on the inside in unexpected ways, like a leather-wrapped island base in the kitchen and as a backdrop for an office desk. 
Meanwhile, the entire interior of the home was reset to do away with the former ground floor apartment unit in an attempt to give the family as much space as possible. After all, only three days following moving in, their first son was born. Then, a year and a half later came their second, Raphael. With Frederick's help, the home was turned back into a single family abode and they even wound up raising the entire roof so that the top floor felt larger, opening up the house as much as they could front to back. Now much airier and more contemporary, this three-story house still managed to find ways to honor its historic charm. Like when an addition was added onto the property, Frederick made sure to build it out of reclaimed masonry and then he installed two pairs of large steel and glass French doors provide access to the backyard. As for the light-filled main level on the second floor, the living room was set up with a vintage sofa crafted in the 1960s that was re-upholstered in cotton candy pink. There's also a gorgeous coffee table nearby from the exact same decade, while Bobby and Rose have completed the look by adding a leather chair, a cutout of Rod Stewart, and a movie poster of Mick Jagger. Not far from there is the couple's new kitchen, which boasts a range in an unusual color known as British Racing Green, with Moroccan tiles styling the wall just above it. The cabinets are a cream color and boast curved white oak candles, while the countertops are imperial Danby stone from the state of Vermont. Elsewhere on the main floor is an eye-popping main staircase that softly curves both up and down, while the surrounding flooring is made out of custom wide plank whitewashed oak. If you were to head down the steps of that staircase, you'll find a guest bedroom with custom shutters crafted out of wood and glass alongside foliage patterned wallpaper. There's also an entertainment room, bar, and a lounge that open up to a garden room with a custom built-in daybed that's been upholstered in dark green linen. At the top of the home, there's the third floor where the home's two main bedrooms are located. In the kids' room, custom millwork was designed by the architects, including a door with green glass circles that leads directly into the nearby bathroom with emerald green tiled floors and a deep plunge bathtub. As for Bobby and Rose's master bedroom, it might be a little small, but it includes a custom white oak headboard as well as end tables that have been finished off with brass rod lamps hanging just above them. To cap off their gorgeous renovation designs, Bobby and Rose hired Brook Landscape to turn what was originally a kind of drab and overgrown backyard into a lush garden with vintage 1960s white fiberglass chairs that are more or less the very definition of chic. So what do you guys think? It both sounds and looks like paradise now that they've reinvented the place, right? Well, before we call it a day, I've got one more story to tell you about this place. Now my best guess is a lot of you are here watching this video after binging Bobby Cannavale's new Netflix series, The Watcher. I mean, I've seen it all myself and it's a pretty exciting few hours of TV, even if the ending does leave a little, okay, maybe more like a lot to be desired. But here is the surprising thing. Not only is the story of that series based on a real life occurrence, but something strangely similar once happened to Bobby soon after moving into this Brooklyn house. During a recent press tour to promote this series, Bob Bobby would provide the PA news agency with details of what happened to him and his family, telling them, two years ago, we got a letter on our backyard, on our terrace, it looked like it was written by a child, saying if you keep up the noise, you're gonna have a problem. Well, as you might imagine, discovering this letter freaked Bobby out, but here's the thing, he never told Rose about it. While debating what to do about this threatening letter, Bobby didn't want to upset his partner or children, and he worried that if he told Rose the truth, she would want to move. Move. Luckily, after staring at the letter for a good long while, it struck Bobby that he actually recognized the handwriting. In fact, it looked similar to cards he'd received from a neighboring family, and he realized that the author of the note might have been the family's little boy. Well, that's not so scary. Bobby headed over next door and discovered the whole thing had been a prank orchestrated by his young neighbor. Still, Bobby says he pulled on this experience, more specifically the unease it created inside of him while he was filming his new Netflix series. All right, everyone, that'll bring an end to Bobby Cannavale and Rose Burns' house tour. Be sure to let me know what you guys thought about the extensive renovations to their historic home in the comments down below. And if not that, then answer me this one question. If you received a threatening letter demanding you vacate your new home, would you tell your family about it or deal with it on your own? Let me know what you would do in this situation. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll see you all in another house tour. Bye.